I'm going to reveal Jesus and his kingship to you and his majesty. Praise the Lord. Okay, this is revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm going to go through uh, some of uh, the word of God that reveals Jesus and his majesty and his kingship. Jesus is all about Jesus. It's not about, it's not about religion. First of all, in heaven, John the Beloved is in heaven. He's saying what he saw, and he's saying, and they sang a song of Moses, the bond servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, praise the Lord, saying, Great and marvelous are your works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O oh Lord the Almighty, praise the Lord. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Hallelujah. He is holy. 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 And the word holy, there's so much in that word holy. He is majestic. He is mighty. Hallelujah. And that brings me to Isaiah. You know, this really quick this morning, I was struggling as my eyes were not even open yet, but I was awake. And I was struggling within. And I could not even speak. I could not pray in tongues. I did not have the strength. And all of it came out was from the Holy Spirit. He guided me and he said, say holy. So all I kept doing was say holy, 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 holy. Holy, and do you know that alone would drive out demons? Do you know how powerful the word holy is in the in the mouth of a believer? Holy, holy. that is speaking of Jesus and his holiness and his majesty and his authority. He has dominion and power and authority over everything in heaven, everything on earth, and everything under the earth, all principalities and rulers of darkness, demons, wicked spirits, the name of Jesus, the conquering one, Jesus the King. Hallelujah. So I kept saying, holy, 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 holy. See, I'm telling you, there's power in saying holy. Like there's power in pleading the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. When you don't know what to say and you know you're dealing with demons and uh, demonic forces, you say that. Okay? Praise God. So in Isaiah chapter 6, you know Isaiah... In chapter 6, it says that in the year that King Uzziah died, he was taken up, and he saw Jesus. He says, I saw the Lord. Even Isaiah is in awe because he is holy, he is majestic, Jesus, God. He said, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. Hallelujah, praise God. This is powerful. Share this series. Come on, this is revelation of Jesus Christ. So he was high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Hallelujah. 
and I see a ghost wants to say that there were seraphim up standing above him. And he goes on to describe the seraphim. And they came and, and Isaiah said, you know, I'm a man of unclean lips. Isaiah, the prophet is saying this. How many of us read that and say, man, this man is righteous. Look how he's being used by God. But as he opened up to heaven, he said, I'm lost. Some translations say, I'm lost. I'm a man of unclean lips. You know? So how much more do we, people of the earth, believers in Christ, need to bow before him in humility and worship because we are mere humans and he is God, he is Jesus, he is majestic, he is king, he is Lord. Hallelujah, amen, praise God. This is Jesus who people go to church to hear about. You know, this is not, it's not religion. You know, I'm not going to go into it. You, you know what I'm trying to say. He has all power and authority. So in Isaiah 6, 5, he says, Woe is me, for I am ruined. He saw the Lord, man, I'm telling you. He is face to face in heaven, you know. And he says, woe to me, for I am ruined. Come on. He's seeing Jesus in all of his majesty, in all of his deity, King Jesus. He says, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. He is acknowledging this, the majesty and the greatness of Jesus. We need to get a revelation of Jesus Christ before preaching, before teaching, every time. We need to come before the Lord in humility and worship. Every single time is not like any other time. We need to acknowledge the, the Lord and His uh, greatness and His power. So Isaiah, you know, he's saying that he is a man of unclean lips. And then one of the seraphim uh, flew to him and gave him a call and touched his lips. How holy is that scene? One of the seraphim, the holy angels, the seraphim, they came over to him and they put a coal, a burning coal to his lips to take away his guilt. This is Isaiah. You're not going on serious. So, you know, in our humanity, our everyday coming and goings, how we need to reverence and fear, which is meaning reverence the Lord Almighty. We cannot take him lightly. This is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day we're going to stand before him in heaven. I, I talk about heaven in my last video and a video before that that, that is entitled Heaven is Real. So we need to prepare 
And it is so important that people get saved. Because their, their eternity is waiting, is before each of us. If we're still here on this earth, eternity is before us. Whether it be eternity in heaven, which Jesus made it possible for us, the victorious one, for us to go to heaven and not have to spend an eternity in hell. So that is before us, and people need to have the chance, the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior so they can have salvation. That is most important to God. That is why Jesus came to save humanity from the kingdom of darkness. So that's why he is called the conquering one, the victorious one. Jesus is king. So Isaiah is caught up in heaven and he sees all this. Isaiah chapter 6, you have to read it. Read it with an open heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. So you can read it. And the magnitude of who, what is going on, and who Jesus is, and, and heaven, and the holiness of God will transform your mind and your heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. In First Timothy, First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.17, 17 equals victory. Praise God. Timothy says, now to the King eternal, hallelujah, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Holiness, magnitude, majesty of God. People take it lightly. This is God, you know, praise the Lord. Praise God in Psalm 95, 3. He says, for the Lord is a great God. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Hallelujah. This is our God, people of God. Psalm 47, 6 to 7 says, sing praises to God. Why? Because it is fitting to sing praises to, to our God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Hallelujah. Sing praises with skillful psalms. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isaiah 37, 16, listen to this, listen to this, you know, I'm not just reading, uh, you know, scripture, this is re revelation of Jesus and his kingship and his majesty to give you another reason to serve God, to remind you who you are serving and all he is, amen? So in Isaiah 37, 16, it says, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the God, God of us too, but he, Israel is his, his country. The God of Israel who is enthroned. Hallelujah, just the word alone enthroned. Praise God. He is enthroned above the cherubim, these are angels. Angels are real. Heaven is real. This is holy. He is uh, enthroned above the cherubim. You are the God. You alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. There is no beginning 
our end to God. He is creator. He has always been. We are the created. So it is, uh, you know, uh, it is for us to worship our God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And he is powerful in might. In, in Revelation, John, the apostle, the beloved, hears, and he goes on to say Revelation 15, 3. This is happening in heaven. Praise the Lord. And they sang the song of Moses, the bond servant of God. And the song of the Lamb, of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, O Lord the Almighty. Hallelujah! Righteous and true are your ways. Amen, King of the nation. Praise the Lord. If you don't know Christ as your Savior and you want to know Him, you want to be right with God. I'm going to lead you in prayer. Say it after me, but repent in your heart. Repent means to simply turn away from the foolish ways that you've been going. You know, maybe they're not foolish, maybe they're good, but from the way without God that you've been going and coming to a right relationship with God and experience the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah! And become brand new. The Word of God tells us whoever is in Christ is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become brand new. No, this is the eternal life. Eternal life, when we die, we continue on. We don't just die and that's it. No, we continue. That is eternal. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So say this prayer, repent in your heart. Say, dear Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Wash me and cleanse me by your precious blood. I believe that you came and you died and you rose again to save me. Fill me to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. May living water bubble over in joy and in love of the Holy Spirit. Baptize me in your love and your Holy Spirit. Empower me to do your will on this earth. Give me boldness. I make you my Lord and Savior. From this day on, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So the word of God says for everyone, every sinner who repents, the angels in heaven, that's going on right now. The angels, not one, the angels in heaven rejoice. Over just one sinner who repents. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. That's awesome. Get connected for sure to a fivefold ministry where, where you can grow in Christ. But start reading the Bible, it will reveal itself to you. The word, the Bible tells us that the word of God, which is the Bible, is alive and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. 
dividing between the bone and marrow that is sharp. Amen. Hallelujah. What does it say that it, it divides between bone and marrow and it is alive and active? Because when you read the Bible, it speaks to your heart. It speaks to your life. It is God alive on the pages and Jesus is God. That is why in the book of John, it tells us, tells us that in the beginning was the Word. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is all. And the Word was, was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. Hallelujah. And He came to earth. Praise God. And He dwelt among us. Hallelujah. So you might say, yeah, I get it, guys. Jesus is God, and then there's the Holy Spirit, and they're one. How I don't understand the easiest way to understand God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit being one is think of an egg. There are three parts to an egg, the outer shell, the egg white, and the yolk, three in one. Hallelujah! Praise God. I pray you are blessed. May the Holy Spirit come upon you, you viewer. If you're new in Christ, I pray the Holy Spirit will guide you to the right fivefold ministry and uh, fill you to overflowing and empower you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, make sure you share this. People of God, share the revelation of Jesus and his majesty and his kingship. Be a part of the Great Commission. Hallelujah, do your part and share. I love you. Keep Jesus first, praise God. Amen.